was I was uh, five o'clock in the morning one morning I couldn't sleep because this stuff kept running through my mind. And the title, the name came to me because I looked at it and I say the black male because I did not want uh, the young brother to exclude themselves because sometimes you use certain verbiage that verbiage can get them to exclude themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you say black males, that includes all males. Right. So that's where the main the name black males came from. And then when you look at the community, you know, I hear people say that we are we we no longer a community. We not even now along our neighborhood, but for all intents and purposes, we are a community. <clears throat> and it's the community that needs our help. And also when you look at the council, a council is a is is, is a body of people that you come in and you get uh, and that, as consultation. Right. You know, so what we need is for the black men, especially black men. We was at a, at, at, at a, at a, at a um, meeting and um, I was very um, adamant about black men in particular being the spearhead of this effort. See, because our women and our children need to see black men standing up and that they can see us. You know, because a lot of us is good people and we don't a lot of good works and we belong to a lot of good organizations. But the where they need to see is that is in the community. Good evening. My name is Brother Stanley. We'd like to welcome you to the Black Mill Community Council of Philadelphia Roundtable Discussion. Welcome, Brother Rahim at the round table. Good evening, Kofi Asante at the round table. Peace and blessings, you with Brother Gamel Aziz at the round table. Good evening, Islam Alaikum. My name is Brother Naji Muhammad. Welcome to the round table. Now we would like to have Brother Rahim share with you our vision, mission, and objective as an organization. Yes, welcome back. This is Brother Rahim. I'm gonna go over the, the mission and the vision statement with some goals and objectives. And I hope that once you see and once you hear what our vision, our mission statement is, that if you hear it and you like it and you with this mission, that you get involved. Our mission statement. Our mission is to unite the black males in our community for the purpose of providing a clean, safe environment for our women, our children, and our elderly through a membership leadership that will embrace our communities with the presence and resources that will uplift and empower in struggling areas of our city. Our vision. Our vision is to promote public safety and communities and uh, our our vision is to promote public safety and community empowerment in our black communities. We are a community service program engaged in employing structures that will stabilize the black community. Our council consists of security, cleanup, mediation, education, and public relations. Our goals and objectives is to transform hotspots in our community to peaceful, clean, safe places that children, women, women, and elderly can feel safe. By bringing many grassroots organizations together for networking, support, inspiration, and to form a strong political coalition. Uh, by gathering many resources that are available to, to these communities. Uh, make, the BMCCP transparent by keeping hotlines, YouTube, Facebook, update, updates available to the public. To create an action plan for our communities that need our assistance. By bringing ideas to our weekly meetings that will help in our fight. Showing up to meetings to carry out the service that we committed to. Uh, by encouraging friends and family members to get involved. Making the BMCCP a template for all the black communities across the country by checking on the progress that we are making and sharing that, that with the community leaders. By seeing what work, what's working in other areas of the country 
and by build up by building up our outside coalition that supports and respects our mission. And that's our vision, our mission, our goals and our objectives of the of the BMCCP. And I hope that if you heard anything that you're interested in, like clean streets, safe environments, and uh, and and you utilizing time and resources in these hot spots that you that you are more than welcome to, to get involved. You don't have to stand on the si sideline, all boots on the ground. Now, Brother Gamel Aziz will share with us what our roundtable discussion would be about tonight. Okay, this is Brother Gamel Aziz, and at this point in the roundtable, we present this section of the Willie Lynch letter because it is important for us to remember who and what is the major source of the black community's problems. Willie Lynch letter, the making of a slave, the breaking process of the African woman and family. Take the female, run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Test in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. If she shows any sign of resistance and submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bullwhip on her to extract that last bit of bitch out of her. Take care not to kill her, for in doing so, you spoil good economics. When in complete submission, she will train the offsprings in the early years to submit to the labor when they become of age. Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into the area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female nigger. We have reversed the relationship. In the natural uncivilized state, she would have a strong dependence on the uncivilized nigger male and she would have a limited protective tendency toward independent male offspring and would raise male offsprings to be dependent like her. Nature had provided for this type of balance. We reverse nature by burning and pulling a civilized male nigger apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death, all in their presence by them being left alone unprotected with the male image destroyed the ordeal caused her to move from a psychologically dependent state of frozen independent state in this frozen psychological state of independence she will raise her male and female offspring in reversed roles for fear of the young male's life she will psych psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent, but physically strong. Because she has become psychologically independent, she will train female offspring to be physically independent. What have you got? You've got the nigger woman out front and the nigger man behind and scared. Mm. This is a perfect situation to sound asleep economics. Before the breaking process, we had to be alertly on guard at all times. Now we can sleep soundly for out of frozen fear, the nigger woman stands guard for us. The nigger male cannot get past the nigger female early slave molding process. He is a good tool, not ready to be tied to the horse at a tender age. By the time a nigger boy reaches the age of 16, he is soundly broken in and ready for a long life of sound and efficient work and reproduction of a unit of good labor force. Continually through the breaking of the uncivilized savage nigger by throwing the nigger female savage into a frozen psychological state of independence by killing the protected male image and by creating a submissive dependent mind of the nigger male slave. We have created an origin cycle that turns on its own axis forever unless a phenomenon occurs and it reshifts the position of the male and female slaves. Warning, possible interlooping negatives. Earlier we talked about the non-economic good of the horse and the nigger in their wild or natural state. We talked about the principle of breaking and tying them together for orderly production. Furthermore, we talked about paying particular attention to the female savage 
and offspring for the orderly future planning. Then more recently, we stated that by reversing the positions of the male and female savages, we create an orbiting cycle that turns on its own axis forever unless a phenomenon occurred and reshifts positions of the male and female savages. Our experts warned us about the possibility of this phenomenon occurring, for they say that the mind has a strong drive to correct and recorrect itself over a period of time if it can touch some substantial original historical base. Thank you. The question now is, what does any of that have to do with the reality of who we are as African people born in America today? You know, what makes this so relevant today? Uh, if we look at even where uh, there's so many examples, uh, young brothers with their pants down a little behind, uh, the uh, demolishment of the male image, all this whole thing about uh, um, uh, uh, genders, uh, you know, um, who is, what initial do you go by? You know, I mean, all of these, there are examples that are right up in front of our face as a result of this Willie Lynch letter. Uh, the reality of what that has done has still put us under psychological slavery. Correct. Um, now, if you look at, even for example, just look at the welfare system, for example. Okay? And um, I know when I started uh, a program, uh, a fatherhood program, <laughs> I had a discussion with a sister, her name was Augusta Clark. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she said to me, uh, <laughs> we were doing a fundraiser, I was doing the first fundraiser for, this, uh, for the organization. And I'm sitting there and she says to me, uh, she pulled me over, she said, Kofi, uh, do you know what you're doing? You know, Augusta Clark was a well-respected sister, right? Uh, elder, city council, we're elder, right? And so uh, I said to her, uh, in my back of my mind, I said, I'm Kofi Asante, of course I know what I'm doing. Right? But in front, I said, because I had so much respect for her, I looked at her, I said, I hope so. Then she took me through a history in terms of welfare, how they used to come into the houses of our mothers and women, right? And the male had to hide because if they found right. them, right, they take away our benefits. Correct. Right? So that is a, a, a prime example of even slavery even going forward. Correct. How in the world can you have a system that they can send somebody into your house, you got a, a, a man living with you, and they tell you he can't live there, and if he find a pair, a sock, a underwear, a, a, a tie, shoe. a shoe, they're gonna take away what you have to feed your children and to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is not a, a, a continuum of this Willie Lynch letter and the philosophy that's behind this letter that has kept us in, in a psychological uh, uh, fit in terms of who we are as African people born in America, I, I don't know what it is. You know, and then when you look at even how we are treated even on uh, an international market, I don't care where you go. You can go to Africa. You can go to Brazil, you can go to any country. The, when you talk about whatever the people of color are in that country, when you talk about the blacks that are in that country or the Africans or whatever the label is, right, we're always disrespected. Mm. We're always at the bottom of the realm, right? Why is that, right? Because that psychological slavery is not just in the United States, but it's right. international, it's worldwide. Mm. So this effect, I don't care where we are, the effect of this is still today, it's relevant today, and it's organizations like the Black Male Community Council that can be the phenomenon that says in the letter in terms of change. We are agents of change right. in terms of, yes. of the BMCC. Yes, sir. Correct. And it's our duty and our responsibility to make that change. Now, that's my story yes, and I'm sir. sticking to it. <laughs> but one so. thing I say about this a portion of the Willie Lynch letter, uh -huh. because the Willie Lynch letter is very in-depth, and I know there's discussion about whether he existed or not existed. And for our purpose, it's not that important to even get into the minutiae of whether he existed or not. But if we get into the contents of the whole Willie Lynch 
uh, 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 allegorical uh, mythology, we can actually agree that this occurred to us as a people, our ancestors. And when you look at what this petition portion of the Willie Lynch letter is talking about, it's the reshifting of the state of the male and the female relationship, where 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 they intentionally did certain things to make our women less dependent and more independent and make us dependent instead of independent. And like it says in there, the main purpose of this whole psychological damage that was done is manifesting today in our communities. And that's why the Philadelphia, the, the Black Male Community Council of Philadelphia is the beginning of the process that if we look at it, because of the concepts that we are bringing forth where we can demonstrate to our women, children, and elders, even ourselves, right. that we are back into bringing our natural order of the male and female relationship. And uh, when we look at at, at, at at the community at large, where we as black men has been, if we be honest with ourselves, we've been absent in that role, not knowing what was the source of it. So what, what happens with this particular information now we can go back to the source of what occurred <coughs> to shift that, that 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 natural order that god created for man and woman to exist in a community setting sure so when we look at this portion of the of the willie lynch letter how they intentionally bull, bull whipped black men almost to the point of death then they took some of us and pulled us apart until we died and it demasculated us in front of our women. And that's why we have to be really conscious of us as black men coming back and demonstrating to our women that y'all can, especially the women, right. that we can depend on us now because we got your back. Well, and, and even, it, it's also to re, it's reason, because you, you hit the nail on the head in terms of how do we look into ourselves to be able to find the answer, right? And the, it's why the violence is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why the murder rate is what it is. That's why the black on black crime is what it is. Mm -hmm. Because of, we're still suffering from this psychological slavery. Correct. And we don't even know. It. Even those people that think that they have made it, right? They, they have the nerve to think mm -hmm. they made it, right? You know, uh, they suffer the same thing. Exactly. You know, it, even when they don't want to realize, even when they don't realize it. You know, uh, so um, this is. Um, uh, what we're doing in terms of exposing this type of, having this type of conversation and these uh, discussions, um, uh, it's long say, overdue, man. I just want to say, like, like for me, I look at the public safety factor that the Willie Lynch created, mm -hmm. right? And the public safety factor is what you brought up, uh, Kofi, is about the, the violence, right? And the hatred, right, for one another. And it's like, like, it's like when you got people in a condition and they stuck in this condition, right? With no, with, with seeing the condition bigger than themselves, right? No way out. There's a, uh, Gamel, like you say, there's nobody coming to rescue us, right? So now here it is that you got the Black Community Council of Philadelphia and a, a group of strong men that's trying to figure out solutions, right? Correct. To the problem that was indoctrinated years and years and years ago, right? Before you know, I mean, or any of uh, any of us. So this was something that we could say that we inherited, right? Correct. Correct. So when we when we look at it as a whole, a lot of the things that's that's important or the things that got our atten uh, attention is a diversion while we sitting back suffering and dying as a mm. community over here. Mm. So now we got to sit back and, and understand what what's really really is important to us and our future existence. So you always talk about our, your, your babies, mm -hmm. your grandbabies, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's the stuff that's right now. That's that's right now. The way the way we going at least for the American uh, African American, right? The, the slave, the ones that's here with no mm. with no home to return to. We mm. stuck. The Correct. ones that, that's here. If we don't create a so solution, like they call a phenomenon, that a shifting. If we don't, uh, and, and, and the, the shifting first come up through recognizing what was done to us. Correct. So this is why I understand that the council is starting here, because this is what what what, what was well, this was the tactic when we was out of control. When we bought here, mm. we was bought here. We was out of control. Mm. So we wasn't submissive to this. So they had to come up with a doctrine to make us submissive. Mm. That 
effective once they implemented it. It had no, it had no ending. It's saying that this cycle will continue Whatever. until something great happens, right? Well, I mean, but look, I mean, you hit another point. But even if you look at the prison system, I was, in fact, I was watching on, on, on television yesterday, and uh, uh, somebody gave the statistics of uh, the prison system that, in terms of the uh, population, right, we make up forty nine percent. Of the, the prison, prison system, forty-nine mm-hmm. percent and thirteen percent of the nation population. What sense does that make? Like so, incarceration is modern-day slavery. Right. Well, I just want let me chime in. I just it's been my let me just piggyback on what the brother was saying. The same paradigm of removing the black male out of that family structure is perpetrated with this uh, prisoner pipeline situation. Um, And it's very important to understand that the Black Male Community Council is that phenomenon. We're going back into the community and be that presence so that once again we can can have the hope, we can have that faith coming from the elderly, the children, and the women, and do what real men are supposed to do in that area is protect our elderly, our children, and that woman, and be that phenomenon to uplift this black male presence to right. try to circumvent a lot of the uh, violence that's being occurred from our misguided youth that don't have that education, don't have that role model to see what exactly a black man is supposed to do. Mm. Well, he ain't never lied. Not now, but... <laughs> Yeah, one of the things I wanted to, uh, to say too, that even though it, is, it has been a psychological effect to the black men and women here in America, I mean, you have to understand over 400 years we had been in the worst condition than anyone ever mm-hmm. in the whole entire planet Earth. And one of the things that what the, the slave master did, he got a strong, he had got the strongest black man he took the strongest, the boldest black man, and what he did, he put a rope on his arms, tied his arms up, and had horses on both opposite sides. Now, I want you to think about this. On the opposite side, and he had all, he had women looking, children looking, and then, then they would, then the horses would pull and rip him apart. Now you got to look at the psychological effect, man. That a woman and looking at looking at a man, not some weak black man, but he go a man who got he's, he's muscles. He, he's got muscles. But I mean, he's big, he's bold, and he just rip him apart. And then after he do that, then he gets another black man, bold, big, strong black man, and then. He rips. He 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 whips him to the point that that he begs for his life. He begs for mercy. And at this point, that the black woman is looking at this man, that hey, damn, ain't nobody can help me. So when you look at when you look to, when you look at 2019. 2019 that most black women a lot of black women don't want to have a man they become independent because they think that they can let the, sure. the black man can't do anything mm-hmm. for for them so that that is a psychological uh, effect that had happened years and years centuries and centuries ago you know so so once we come and, and present this knowledge to them you know, they have to understand that there is a problem in the, in the social uh, 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 realm of the of the black family that we need to really get our act together and understand that you know it's going to take time to really bring this together, bring this together. Yeah, right on, right on. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, uh, the reality when you were saying that. The reality of that visual is now in my mind, and um, uh, it's sad. And it's so it makes you so, in me anyway. Inside, it makes me so sad uh, that our ancestors, all of what we're going through over 400 years, and it's uh, interesting that you brought that that number up right now, because 2019 does mark the 400th year 
a commemoration of the first enslaved Africans uh, coming to Virginia right. in 1619. So this is a very a pivotal point in time and history for us. And I think that, um, I think we're right where we're supposed to be. I think that uh, 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 God and our ancestors are moving us in that direction uh, because it, it is our time. And, um, and we're the ones that uh, are riding in the sailors. Yes, sir. You know, it, it's just like in, uh, in 1865, um, when um, the last enslaved Africans in Galveston, Texas, okay. found out they was free, right? One of the one of the little known facts was is that even though Colonel Granger made the statement, he went there in Galveston with colored soldiers. Mm -hmm. Okay, he did not want to um, tell the people the remaining two hundred fifty thousand enslaved Africans that they were mm -hmm. free. It was the colored soldiers that said. You either tell him, or you got an issue. You gonna you have a problem. Oh yes, sir. You gonna have a problem, mm -hmm. right? And then he decided that in his best interest, right, that he he make the statement. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, history is full of segments and points where uh, we had to step up, and right. we did. I mean, you know what though? There's something that you were saying, Najee, right, about the public displays, right, mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, degrading, right, right. And I see that the public display still goes on to the day. Mm -hmm. I looked at one of the last public displays of of self, nothing like you, you worth nothing, was the Trayvon Martin situation, mm -hmm. right? So I sit yes, back and see this on all the TVs, right? So when you could take a town watch person, right, mm -hmm. to sit back and follow one of us, right, that's a kid, and be told to stand down, right? And then right. assassinate this person or create an altercation after the law enforcement told you to stand down. Then you sit back and you pick this on all of the TVs and he walk away with a not guilty verdict with nothing. No consequences or nothing, right? It's another example of when it's publicized stuff or self uh, 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 worth. Mm. And to sit back and say, now had the roles have been reversed, and we look at it like this here, if this was us, on, even black on black, and one and, and Zimmerman was black, right. and he did this, and once he did not obey that command, mm -hmm. he would have had some type of sentence or punishment coming to him. Absolutely. In my mind, at mm -hmm. least in my mind. And then if the roles was reversed to the point, man, where, where a black officer was doing this to a, a somebody white, and he was told to stand down and follow, and follow that person, then we'd be talking about major prosecution right. at that level. Mm -hmm. So, when mm -hmm. but because that life is worth more, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying. Yeah. The circumstances is the same, right? But but what life is worth more? So when they get it, because when we look at the Rodney King, right, and the OJ, right, this is when 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 when, when our people sit back and they seen with the Rodney King verdict, it was on camera. They, the first verdict was a not guilty verdict. The riot came, then they sit back and said no, try them again, and they came back with the guilty mm -hmm. verdict. The OJ verdict was like really us taking the thing like we won something, right? When we didn't win, win anything, but it was, but, but what was the satisfaction is that, okay, it felt like a black man got some type of uh, justice. Uh, justice right. right. So this is how you, you take these cases mm -hmm. and on a psychological standpoint, man, it don't even be about the case. It'd be about the racial stuff mm -hmm. more so than about the situation. Yeah. But and when anybody get a chance to sit back and you examine the Willie Lynch, mm -hmm. and then because and, and, it's embedded in all of us that we already noticed that 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 mm -hmm. these things, these public uh, 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 displays of of um, of uh, racial inequality, right? R racial injustice. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff is every time you turn around, you sit back and when somebody is trying to diminish you, or you sit back and say, "Was well, it justice right there?" Well, what, what, what do we do when we see a heinous crime? First thing we want to know is who committed the crime. Did the black man do that, or did the white man do that? <laughs> it's just like you, right. say, you might sit back and say, right. you know what I mean? They might, you might see a news flash. Man barricaded in the house with a family. Right. First thing we want to know, who, who, is he black? Is, 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 is. I mean, you know, and, and that's what, yeah. what, 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 what a lot of us subconsciously, you know what I mean? We, we might see the, see the situation, but we want to, we, we want to know who did it. Right. Uh, you know, I want that. Uh, uh, ask a question. How do you make white 
powerful. And I, I came up with a, a uh, 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 idea of how they do it is that any time that when, when a, a white person, a white man, white woman, or child, whatever, uh, com commit, committed a crime, the, the penalty is not as crucial or as bad as if it was a black person. So it's like a continuation that they do less punishment when it comes down to white people. Or, in fact, you ignore it. So the, 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 the way how you make it powerful is that you, can, you ignore it or you give it less penalty. And then you show that when the black person does something, you give it to his maximum. You know the, what double, I'm saying? the double standard exists in every social, economic uh, genre that you can think of. Mm -hmm. Whether it be real estate, whether it be employment, whether it be eat, going to a restaurant to get something to eat, the double standard is always in effect, right. and not just here in America, around the world. Mm -hmm. If that double standard is in effect, right? Period. They they have a, a word which is called blockbuster. Um, it was a time that when you have a white community, or a, a white community where uh, they maintain. But uh, I was reading a story, I think it was maybe in the uh, uh, late 50s, that uh, a white family moved out and they sold it to a black family. And once they sold it to the black family, they call it blockbuster. Mm. And then what happened is the real estate uh, would go you. and put the alarm up to the, the white families and say, listen, you better sell your property because if you don't sell your property, it's going to go down. The value is going to divide, gonna go down. But reality is not really going down, but this is what they're saying. Sure. So once the value, once the, the white folks start selling their, uh, their homes, what have you, black people come in, the next thing you know, uh, or another thing what they did too, they, they double uh, charge the family that was moving these houses. Let's say the house was worth only uh, at that time fifteen thousand dollars. They would charge them maybe thirty thousand, and the house wasn't even worth thirty thousand. Mm. You know, so they were actually exactly. they was just, they was making money, getting the white families out, but at the same time doubling the prices on the black people, and then bringing the value of the community down at the same time. That's a good point of interest. That's a good, Brother Donji. But I want to uh, return the conversation back to what my brother Raheem was talking about because uh, it's apparent on this Willie Lynch syndrome, we still seeing up to date public lynchings of our black people. Mm. Say, for instance, you got the Bill Cosby's mm. and you got the other black people that are publicly lynched to coincide with what the Willie Lynch thing is about. But what we're trying to do with the black male community council is to be a presence in the community. We're going to let you know now we're coming to a neighborhood near you and we're in effect. And we want to see, we want this presence to be able to, right. to try to curtail a lot of the senseless violence and, and just be a presence alone because it hasn't been a presence. Now we want people to wake up, you know, we want to remove punk to power, we want to stop talking and do a little walking in our communities, take our communities back. Boots on the ground. I'm glad that Boots you, on the ground. Yeah, I'm glad that you said this, right? Because now we're getting back to like, you know, like the black uh, uh, male community council of Philadelphia, right? And when you said that, like, now our presence in the community and that nobody has doing that, there's people that's doing it, but they're doing it in pockets so small, right, right. that it's not effective. Mm -hmm. So now when you sit back and say, well, you know what, and we got to get rid of the, 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 the Willie Lynch, right, within exactly. ourselves. Exactly, right? in ourselves, right? first. We got to be able to unite with other organizations, Correct. right, and then be able to do it in a collective manner. Right. Because it's too big of a job for us to sit back and go out with 10 people or 20 exactly. people. Exactly. But when we know and what they bank on is for us not to be able to pull all everybody together, mm -hmm. right, for one common cause, for one common goal. So now once we sit back and say, you know what, we all, uh, I always talk to my dad about the Pareto 80-20 theory. They said it's not everybody. 80% of the people are doing the right thing. Exactly. But it's 20% of the people that's messing up for everybody. Yes, so sir. now we got neighborhoods that of, of, uh, that's 20% of the people that's messing up for the yes, other 80%. Exactly. So now as the men in these areas, right, 
that's representing these the working the working people that got families that got wives children I mean every you know person got somebody in this community right. that they should love and, and, and have enough respect for mm -hmm. that 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 when they going through that these people feel safe right but they may not be able to do it alone because that twenty is connected mm -hmm. that twenty is together they unify one common cause to instill fear right to destroy. Because Correct. not because like when I say this, like instill fear, a lot of this stuff goes on unconsciously, because it's in the music, it's in the uh, the, right. the, uh, the, right. the, uh, the the culture. It's okay, like 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 in our culture, right? And it's sad, but it's like the more homicides you got, the more respect you get. Mm -hmm. You yes. don't you, you you and just think about that. The more drugs you sell, the more high on the plateau it is. Everything to demonize and destroy our communities. Here we is right now. I mean, you know, you can put that it's as a badge, a badge of mm -hmm. honor. Yes. You know what I'm and also, if you get locked up, you get a bonus. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. like a pledge of honor. It's like a notch on your belt. Yeah. So now here it is that we got a culture in the system, right? That that's re you being rewarded for destruction, right? And if you sit back and you and you doing the right thing, right? A lot of times and stuff, man. That's looking at as like being plain. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. So now, is it, what I'm saying is a mindset, is a culture and stuff right there that the council is talking about addressing, right? You know what I mean? And redirecting because we've been programmed this mm -hmm. way. So now when we sit back and say what we got to do is now we got to deprogram the, the uh, 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 that mindset. Then that's challenging, right? Very much. It is. Right? But it's no less awesome. challenging because we're trying to do it in small pockets. So the council is calling all grassroots organizations to come together. All Cause, grassroots. Because this is this is like 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 it's like putting an effort, right? And you pick up a good effort, but your effort will never be successful for the overall outcome because it's not big a big enough effort. So now you got to mm -hmm. go and go get and attach yourself to other people's good work because there's so much good work that's going out there, going on out there. Correct. Well, yes. I'm glad I'm glad you said that because if the uh, since we have. Uh, started all of our Saturday meetings have just been phenomenal phenomenal the wow. the men that have come out the organizing of the different committees uh, the different organizations that are coming to the table uh, is evidence in terms of proof positive in what you're saying uh, so and yeah yes we got our work cut out for us uh, yes we you know uh, uh, we have to build and all of those things uh, but the way that we've started, We've even started from a perspective of do for self. Uh, that in, in for terms self, of yeah. in terms of, uh, of of raising our, our own dollars, even even to get these uh, these bad t-shirts. Yes, right. Fully self-supported. Hold up, so that you fully self Get that back. Show that back. Oh, right uh, there. Turn around. Turn us again. Oh, yeah, right stand there. it. Your boots on the ground. See, boots, on the boots, on the boots, on the boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Boots on the ground. Uh, and even that slogan, boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. All hands a on call hands. to action. Boots on the boots ground. Boots on the ground. A uh, call to action. Yes, sir. Uh, is what we are perpetuating, uh, and, uh, uh, and 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 want to make happen. Yeah, and if uh, you can't, if you if you listen, man, not everybody is built for this. So my thing is, if you can't put a boot on the ground, put some money on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Because like I understand that this is a uh, you know this this is a mission, right? That you know what I mean? It's, you know that. That you know, some people chance. I mean, you know, want to stand in the background with, but 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 financial donations is, is, is also welcome to the council because you know brooms for cleanup, trash bags, you know what I mean, you know, uh, 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 papers for uh, you know to get out mission out the hotlines and stuff like that. Things you know, is, is, you know, cost, it costs money. So you might be you know quote unquote too busy to actually uh, uh, you know be out there in the community. You know what I mean? But you know, you got a couple dollars. So anything like, you know what I mean? And I respect it either way. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, we would like everybody to, you know, know, know to, to come out and get the time the time and attention, but that's not gonna be a reality. But there's some people that right there that's financially strapped, right? That can sit back and give a donation to the cause. And um and, and that 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 won't go unrecognized because then now we got like a a, a weekly minutes to come out where we highlight people that actually that actually uh, give funds and donations. Just grabbing a sweatshirt, you know what I mean, you know, a hat or paraphernalia is another way of giving back to the uh, to, to to the council and our support and our efforts because we're not 
right now, you know, we self-funded, you know what I mean, by, by like Kofi has said, there's so many good men, man, that, uh, that come down on Saturdays from two to four, that give their time and building the, you know, the structure, so that way when we call these men together for our call out, we're not calling you to no bull crap. We're not just come, coming in, fiddling our thumbs, playing footsies, and I mean, after we can call 10,000, 20,000 people together yes, with sir. no plan. Mm -hmm. So now the plan is being created so that that way, if you want to, and you real about securing up this, the, the community and helping your community in a historical fashion, mm -hmm. right? And you want to be, be present to make history, then now you sit back and say that, you know what? Let me go ahead and support the call out. Let me get that boot, let me get them boots on the ground so right. that way I don't got another yes, man, right? Standing up for my family, and mm. I was present to stand well, up for my own family. Talk about it, mm. yes, sir. Well, hey, brother Stanley, did you, you no, got any no, final words for no, us, man? My final word is what he just said, <laughs> <laughs> because that's the essence of what it is. The reason why I believe that this portion of the Willie Lynch letter was so important, because it gives us the key, unbeknownst to them, of what we need to do in order to reshift or re undo what was done. So we are the black males of the community that are coming with a design, orchestrated potential plan to be able to change their perception. Listen, I have 14 grandbabies, four great grandbabies, and at the end of the day, I feel as though it's our, my responsibility to, as a man, to make sure that whatever I can do as the remaining time I have on this planet, to reshift that portion of the Willie Lynch letter and bring that phenomenon that it talks about, that we can be able to demonstrate, not by verb words, but by action, what real men do, and we are real men. And I believe this wholeheartedly, that this the spirit that the Creator put in us is what we're gonna be activating, because I've seen it done before. You know, one of my favorite and one one of my favorite ancestors is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I think the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had the keys, he had the answer. And if we ever go back and study the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and what he did and what he was born, he bought what was what was needed for us as black men and particularly to come up and stand up. The, the concept of do for self was his what, what came to him. He he didn't say you need to do for yourself. He bought a structure that was teaching us how to do for you ourselves. You know, I always say this here when I when I think about the the the, the, the fruit classes, is at the end of the day it was about teaching men what their responsibility in the household was. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. and also you know it, it was a lot of things. And during that period of time, there was a lot of brothers that was anointed by the ancestors and other energies that was actually bringing us the answers, but somewhere along the line we fell asleep. Sure. And that's why sure. when I look at the when I look at this portion specifically of the specifically of the Willie Lynch letter, if we could just grasp it and understand it, study it, we will be able to then see the importance of us, number one, having educational classes in the community to teach manhood training, manhood classes, teach what was done to us so we could break the psychological change of slavery that is in our DNA and in our genes. Mm. So I, 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 I believe that we are, we are and here's, here's another thing, I, I'm not going to be long. 2019 is a very, very important year for mm. us as kidnapped Africans here on the continent of North America because this is our 400 year sojourn. And there's a book that I read years ago, The Return, if anybody interested, please get it and look and read it, because it talks about the 400-year cycle. It says that determining your next 400 years is the last 15 years of the last 400-year cycle and the 15 years that begin the next 400-year cycle. It will determine whether you're going to spiral upward or spiral downward. Mm -hmm. And that's why what we're doing right now is so important, because if we could catch the energy, the synergy, and we do what we're doing, and there's no more. Listen, it's no more than black men standing up and doing what we know that's in our spirit to do. Mm -hmm. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, my, uh, my, my final word would be this. We're standing on the strength on the shoulders of our ancestors. We ain't waiting for no permission. We're not waiting for no poly tricks. 
we don't need no permission to do what males naturally supposed to do, and that's the Black Male Community Council coming to a neighborhood near you to be in effect, to be a, fo a driving force to try to curtail a lot of the unnecessary violence uh, uh, with, with the principle of love. But we ain't scared. It's time for us to do something. We're not waiting on the police force. We need to police our own people. We have a, uh, a workable plan into in effect. And we're asking that any able-bodied black males willing to participate, come on through. We need you. And in order for them to do that, they just need to look at our, uh, on our website or um, are we going to leave a number? Yeah, we can, uh, we can actually give you the actual address where we're meeting every Saturday from 2 to 4. And the address is um, 1516 West Girard Avenue in the city of Philadelphia. The zip code is 19130. And we are there diligently. One of our models is consistent consistency, boots on the ground, and nobody's coming to our rescue. So that's the energy that we're working I'm with safe. and from. And you're welcome. Everybody is welcome. And again, it's a, it's a it's an organization that is geared around black men and black men standing up for our women, Amen. children, and elders. That is our story, and we stick into it. it.